Hi, welcome everybody. This is Scott McLeod, another episode of Coronavirus Chronicles. I am delighted uh, today to talk with my friends from the Liberty Public Schools in Missouri about how they're responding to the global pandemic. I've got Jeremy Tucker, Superintendent of the School District, and Jeanette Westfall, Executive Director of Curriculum Instruction and Staff Development. That's a long title with lots of responsibilities. Uh, between the two of them, they do all kinds of great things, and I'm sure they'll share as we go along. Uh, Jeremy and Jeanette, thanks for being with me today. Why don't you just start off by sharing some of the things that Liberty is doing in response to, you know, these crazy times right now. You bet. Thanks to thanks for the invitation to connect, Scott. Um, and these are, like you said, crazy times. Um, we're really into two weeks of closure in and around um, kind of what's going on across the country and across the world. Um, prior to that, we were on our spring break, so it's really been about three weeks since we've had students in classrooms. Um, and in Missouri, it's a little different. We've seen a lot of states make decisions to close schools from kind of that governor's seat, um, whereas in Missouri, it's kind of been school districts left uh, to make that decision. And so we really banded together as school districts, along with our health departments and mayor's offices, um, to make those decisions and currently stand closed through April 24th uh, with the understanding that that will obviously likely be extended uh, for the remainder of the school year, but really kind of navigating that on a day by day, week by day basis. Um, what we've discovered is really probably three key areas that bubbled up very quickly um, that we needed to focus upon, one of which was that transition to digital learning or school at home. Um, the second piece certainly was care for kids that are um, in need of breakfast and lunch services, as many districts are doing across the country. And then lastly, it's really that care for our Liberty Public Schools family, as we think about our nearly 2,000 employees. Um, we were pretty fortunate to have gone through a strategic planning process uh, just recently, in which one of those uh, areas identified that we wanted to work on was a flexible learning approach. And so we put in place for the winter a response to snow days and how we might flip to learning at home. And so we developed a system. It was pretty preliminary. But then from that, we used it once earlier this winter. And then that kind of served as our foundation for this initial two weeks that parents were familiar with it, teachers were familiar with that process, and then that has springboarded us to the remaining uh, days in that closure and potentially the rest of the school year. Um, so phenomenal um, appreciation to our community, our teachers, our board, uh, students who are living it on a daily basis and know that this is version probably 2.0. We've got a three or four along the way, um, but it's been a unique experience for all of us. Cool. And then anything you want to throw in here in terms of what you're trying to make happen right now, a couple weeks in? Um, just uh, like what Dr. Tucker said is we're really focusing on the relationships with our students and our families because we recognize that we're asking a lot of them, you know, to manage their children at home and their learning. And so we're just doing everything we can to support the environment with from just making sure that everybody has access. We're very fortunate in Liberty that our community has given us the tools to do that. So we, we understand how difficult that might be for a system that doesn't have that kind of support. And then um, just making sure that we take, like what you said, taking care of our kids. They don't have to come to us anymore. You know, this is a choice now and they can, have Wi-Fi issues or technology issues if they so find it. So how can we take a situation where they were compelled to come to us every day and make this a choice where they want to come and see us every day and to keep learning exciting for them. So that's been, it's been kind of fun to, you know, and challenging at the same time. Right. So, you know, Liberty has a long history of trying to be on the cutting edge of some innovative learning practices. Um, you all have been focused for a long time on sort of trying to push out higher level, deeper learning, um, critical thinking and problem solving, a lot of student agency, a lot of sort of project and inquiry based learning, you know, throughout as much of the district as you can. What does that look like when students aren't in a building? 
it, it doesn't get any more real than what we're going through right now, uh, quite honestly. And um, a companion piece to our strategic plan was developing a profile of a graduate, like a lot of districts have done, right? And so we, we polled our community as to what are those skills and dispositions that we need students to possess upon graduation that they can carry with them through life. Right. And it is, it's a lot of the things you just mentioned. Um, but as we were talking in preparation for this conversation, Jeanette and I were reflecting on how those skills and dispositions are being lived out right now <laughs> among our teachers in terms of collaborating and cr thinking critically, like you said. Um, constantly messaging and communicating out where we're at, that agency piece like you talked about. Um, so I think if we come out of this experience and fall back on traditional ways of doing things, shame on us. Um, we can't unlearn what we're learning right now. Um, and that, if anything, in the, the silver lining here is that that's pretty exciting. Um, to think about what could be. And I know our teachers and students and families are living that alongside us. Um, so that's probably one of the highlights we've seen. Yeah, I think, you know, we, one of the things too that just to add on to that, what, what we have found is one, we are relying pretty heavily on our networks. Yeah. And we have a lot of really great connections through um, you know, just like Dr. Tucker gets information from other superintendents, not just the local area, but even like nationally, which has been really helpful. And then um, the other part is, I think one of the enabling conditions we have is we've been working on mindset for our instructional staff for a long time. And in a situation where Dr. Tucker kind of called this out uh, earlier this week with our leadership team is, People who see things as X's and O's or black and white are really struggling right now. And, um, and even people who see things as gray are a bit uncomfortable in this situation where every day we're asking people to think very differently about the way that they were initially trained. So we, um, I was sharing this with him earlier that it's nice in a district where the leadership is supportive and makes us feel comfortable with our own learning. Mm -hmm. And I can do that for other people because Dr. Tucker does that for me. Right. And he allows us to just think a little bit differently and allows us to go from where we are to where we need to be to meet the needs of our kids. And uh, I don't know that there could be any like ideation around just be good with people and, and help them along the way because right now we're all really deep in the learning pit. I mean, we just are. And um Thank goodness we've had a minute ahead of this to think about that. Our our team has been able to do that for a while, but not everybody has that luxury. And so it's it's helping. Yeah, no, absolutely. So you think about the kind of learning and teaching that larry has been trying to facilitate for a long time now as we transition to these remote modalities, at least for a few months, right? For everybody, not just some. Uh, what seems to be working really well for you all right now and where seem to be the challenges or sticking points in your community? Jeanette can probably speak more closely to that in terms of the, the instructional piece. What we've seen is in terms of a community response is an over overwhelming appreciation we feel from our families um, for us continuing to work and evolve in this transition to, you know, learning at home or school at home. Um, thinking ahead as far as a year out, we will probably no longer approach traditional onboarding of new teachers without having the conversation that you really have two pieces to consider, that face-to-face -face interaction and engagement in a classroom. We don't want to lose that. But then you also have to consider what that digital platform and learning environment looks like in situations like this or just in a hybrid approach. Right. Um, so getting families used to that, getting our kids used to that, but then also looking to the future as to, okay, things aren't going to be the same. Um, and so how do we take advantage of this opportunity, um, but then also create that mindset or extend that mindset in that it's okay to color outside the lines and think creatively. And if anything, question just about everything. Um, so that's really kind of where we're at and having those conversations with our board, our staff, as well as our community. Mm -hmm. Sure. I think, uh, you know, just trying to be, um, in, just in respect to the instruction, we're, we're trying to be flexible. Like we came out 
off of our strategic plan plan, which was so nice. We had this flexible learning plan that we were really able to and actuate right out of the gate so that everyone was comfortable, they knew about it. We'd actually tested it because we had a snow day. So that really helped us um, just think about it differently. But then um, thinking about the structures that were set up that we had been following that were face to face, right? So things from um, the number of days that we go to school and the number of hours that we go to school each day was set up in a, virt in a, in a physical world that now we're really thinking about why do we stay in that mode and is that necessary, right? The same thing with grading, right? It was a, a lot of accountability for showing up into my classroom every day and these things were expected. And so now that kids aren't doing that anymore, what does student evidence look like and how is that different in a virtual world than it was in a day-to-day -day interaction kind of world? And so we've really been thinking differently about that and trying to give ourselves permission to um, to to adapt to this new world and making sure our teachers are comfortable in it because it's quick for us to adapt in our leadership thinking but it's not necessarily that easy once you have to hit you know ask a teacher to consider that and anywhere from 30 to 150 students right that's a huge ask uh, in a virtual you know, it's, we're not in the room talking to each other and there's a lot of comfort in that. And then we switch to this, so. Yeah, no, absolutely. Anything else you two want to share here? Or we're getting near the end here. I think, you know, Jeanette hit on it and really, you know, our advantage here in the Midwest and ironically is to be able to connect with districts that might be a few weeks ahead of us and learn from them and with them. Um, but at the same time, we talk about being positioned for purpose in our district often for each of us, but then also collectively as a system and that what we're learning and doing and experimenting with, we're more than willing to share with anybody. Um, and hopefully they'll reciprocate that as well. So it's truly moving outside of that isolated school setting into more of a network or collaborative environment. Um, that's probably been the most beneficial piece along the way. Got it. Cool. Chairman Jeanette, I appreciate your time. I also really appreciate the emphasis on the idea that, yes, right now it's challenging. We feel like we're barely keeping our heads above water, but we're developing skill sets and mindsets that are gonna create opportunities for us in the future, and we can't lose sight of that. Um, and we're gonna have some really fun conversations down the road whenever things maybe get a little more normal. Right? Absolutely, we look forward to that. Yeah, thanks for your time today. I know how valuable it is, appreciate it. Thanks, Scott.